Praise the Lord. So, let's begin by saying um, you should stop living your life to chance. You should stop doing what? Living your life to chance. There are efforts you have to make for what is due to you to come to you. There are what efforts you have to make for what is yours to come to you. Now, some people assume, uh, some people assume that if it is mine, then you should, you, I shouldn't make any effort. It should come to me. It's a lie. So, stop assuming that if it is yours, it will come to you. No, that is human wisdom. That is not even a real wisdom. It's a low kind of wisdom. That what is for, what is what is due to you will come to you without any effort. No, there is effort you must make. Okay, if not, why don't you start at home? Let all the lecturers know to enter your head. Hmm? Is it possible? Eh? Okay. <laughs> so you have to make efforts. You have to take action for what is yours to come to you. So I said. Why didn't you stay in your house and all the books in your school fly into your head? Why do you have to go through school to graduate, to learn? Why do you have to make all those efforts? Are you getting me? The same way there is effort on your side for whatever is due to you to come to you. You must make what? You must make efforts. Some of you have not fallen in love before. Fall in love. Don't be scared. Don't say, ah, people are... I've seen somebody that is hot. Why should I fall in love? Let love find me. Some people say, let love. It's, it's even some people's prayer points. Let love find... Some people are praying, let me find love. Some people are praying, let love. Let love do what? Love cannot find you if you are not making effort on your side. And you can't find love if you're not so making what? If you're not so making what? Yes. So you have to make efforts. You have to do what? So number one, in finding the right person, go to the right places. Go to the right places. Like church. I found my wife in fellowship. Hmm? In our school fellowship. I was looking at her. Right? And she was not the only one I was looking at. Her. <laughs> I will use my scan and be scanning all the girls. Which one is good for my future? Yes. Because I made up my mind that I will... Anybody I'm relating with, I will marry the person. So I was dating for marriage. I was not dating to count. You know, some people count. Some of us guys count how many girls we have. We have dated. Ah, that girl. Ah, I don't. I don't chop up. That girl. Ah, I don't chop up. One day you chop, chop. Your thing go chop. <laughs> Please don't date like that. Did you hear what I said? So that you will not come here for one day and say, Pastor, pray for me and you are crying. I'll be laughing. And you'll say, Pastor, blood is coming out of my penis. I'll be laughing at you. Laughing at you. Laughing at you. Because I'm telling you now. Are you getting me? So go to the right what? Places. Go to the right places. It's not everywhere you go to find the right person. Suppose say you find somebody in club. Okay. I will advise you on that. Does it mean that everyone that goes to club, they are bad? No. Are, are you getting me? I will advise you on that. Does it also mean that everyone that comes to church, they are good? No. But at least, there is, a, there is a breeding place that some things are not allowed. Are you getting me? And one of those places is church. Then there are other right places. Make sure you are always going to the what? To the right places. 
I was always in fellowship in my church. I was always in church. I was always in fellowship. Always, always, always. Whether I'm sick, I was always in fellowship. Yeah, it was fun. Because I know one day I will not be in school again, right? I'm not in school again now. So I was always, always, praise the Lord. I hope this thing will be enough. Okay. Number two. Number two, be active in any group you are in. Okay. Please, go out from there. Be active where? In any group you are in. But make sure you are in the right group, first of all. Make sure you are where? There's something I wrote down here about that. I said, be a notice me person in the right group. If you want the right people to find you, you want to find the right person, be a what? Be notice me kind of person. A good notice me kind of person. You know there are bad notice me kind of people. I hope you know. Be a notice me kind of what? For example, in our group, Pastor Charios group, for some of you that are there, you know we have 200 and something people there. Only few are, are commenting. Okay. Yes. Do, for now, do I accept posting something? Yes. But if you post the one I think is not good, I delete it. Since it's a church group, you don't turn it into another church word. Affair. Are you getting me? You should respect that. But you should be able to, all those things people are posting or I'm posting, be able to say amen. You know, all those kind of, make your comment. During the new moon, some people were saying happy new moon. Happy, only few said that. Are, are you getting are you what I'm saying? Like this morning we had someone who makes you just post it. Or do a do a mini banner, a quote of your write your pastor's name, post it on the group. You, you know me, let me post it carries your number, right? So when my notice I say, Dad, this person is posting something that is lovely. I'm private chat you. So be a notice me kind of what? A good notice me kind of what? Person. Be, be active in any group you are in. Be active. But make sure you are in the right group, first of all, right? Make sure you're where? In the right group. Don't be in the wrong groups. Don't be in a gossiping kind of group. Some married women join some groups where they tell them, stop tolerating nonsense from your husband. Don't be in those kind of groups. Even you single people, don't be in a group where they, where you are a single lady, you are in a group where they insult men. And you want to marry. It can't work. It's the truth. You're a young man. You're in a group where they insult ladies. Where they see ladies as rag. As toys. And you want to marry a good one. So be active where? In anywhere. In any group. Like you are a member of this church. Be in a unit. Be where? Come to church early. Sit in front. Do something that people around can notice you. Yes. One day a young man asked, a small boy asked, um, a 60-something-year-old man that is a billionaire, ask him a question. How do I become famous? The man said, whenever you do something good, tell people about it. The boy says he, he goes to people's house and help them to throw away their trash, their dustbin. So you know what the man told him? He said, whenever you do that, go and knock at the door of anybody you, you throw his dustbin away. Tell the person, my name is Charios. I threw your dustbin and I helped you to throw your dustbin. By the time you do it in your neighborhood, they will know you. Hey, that boy that throws our dust, ah, he's a good boy, a lovely boy. So be a notice me kind of what? Person. Come to church early. Be like this evening service now. Be there. Let everybody, let somebody stay in the house and say, I know that this person must be in church, even if nobody comes. Be there and be early. Everybody will notice you. That's how it's done. 
And when the time comes, they will suggest you. That's how it is. But when nobody knows you, you want to hide in the crowd, you want to disappear. You are doing yourself. That's timidity. I hope you know. Don't say, I don't like showing myself. You are being timid. Eh? Nobody wants to marry a timid person. One day they told me, in my final year, so you know, when you are a final year, you become like, a, you are like a father. Are you getting me? And, hey, the people that are our leaders in the choir at that time, they were in year two and year three. Final year was a 500 level. So one day one of them told me, Sir, you will lead praise. I looked at the person. So, sir, I said, No problem, ma. <laughs> I didn't come and say, Give it to that person. Because if I've told her to give it to that person, she'll give it to that person. Because I used to be her pastor, and I was still her pastor. But I said, No problem. So I went aside practicing in my room. <laughs> and my wife, that day I let praise. That's why she's laughing. The time of praise came, Pastor Chariot came in, came in and. <laughs> <laughs> Only their laughter, everybody will. That's the praise alone. <laughs> I left it. I came down. I asked again, did I do well? She was laughing. At her. And I, I'm like, praise her. What <laughs> this is what they tell you to leave something. You are not leading. You can't even come and meet Pastor and say, Pastor, let me leave. Let me leave something. You don't know. Be a good, notice me kind of what? Person. Be a good notice me kind of person. Let people really notice you. It's not bad. It's bad when they notice you for bad. Are you getting me? But when they notice, let people say, ah, are you the only one? Yes, you are the only one. That's how it's done. Hello? That's how the right people will find you. And that's how you find the right people. Number three. Make yourself valuable. By adding value to yourself. You know, you can't attract what you don't have. I hope you know. Uh, they say like, you know, like attracts likes. If you are not valuable, you can't attract someone that is valuable. So make yourself what? Valuable. By adding value to yourself. How do you add value to yourself? By reading. Read a good book. Give me that, my book. Read a good book. Some of you have this book and you have not read it. Apart from those that came new to church today, if you come next Sunday, we'll give you the book free. Read a good book to change your mindset, to change your ideology, or to give you new ideas. That's how to add value to, your, to yourself. Read a good book. Year to year, you are not reading. God forbid. How do you cope without reading anything from January to December? Huh? You know that reading a book is, is a journey. Eh? It's like where you are moving around. You are moving around. You, you, are, you, are, you, are, you are journeying in someone's experience. Do you know that? Yes. The person tells stories, gives you ideology that can help your life. Please, before this year ends, get two books. Get a book. Read. Read it and see what happens. Are you getting me? Read it and see what happens. It will help you. Praise the Lord. Read it and see what happens. So make yourself what? Valuable. Go for seminars. Go for what? Seminars, conferences. Go. Now we are doing online, online. Stop attending only online seminars. Go for seminars. There are still physical what? Come for ladies and the guys who love them. Go for seminars. Get to know something you don't know. Are you getting me? And you see what will happen in your life. Add value to yourself. Become valuable. Become valuable. Your thinking is a cake because you have not read any good book. You've not even read anything at all. You're still thinking like someone in the village. Even someone in the village is better than you. You know that some people, the way they think, eh? Is somehow, you're wondering. <laughs> Don't be that kind of Are you getting me? Don't be that kind of person. Read a book. 
They are books. If I carry them like this and I'm reading them, I can't drop them. I'm just reading because I'm, I'm learning something from the person's experience. I'm learning a lot. A lot that will add value to my life. You can't go far in life in terms of value if you are not adding value to yourself. I, I, are you getting me now? If you are sick, read a book on healing. If, if there is somebody around you that is sick, the person cannot read, read for the person. Every problem has a solution. Every problem has what? Every, you are the one that have not gone to discover it. Is Yahoo Yahoo the only way to? In fact, Yahoo Yahoo is mental laziness. It's not a way of wealth. It's mental what? It's fraud. Fraud is meant, if you are a fraud type, it means you are not smart. There's nothing about smartness and fraud. Some of you think they're using smartness to even fraud. It's a lie. When you start reading, you know what I'm telling you. There is a way to wealth. There is a way to anything. It's all in a book. Go and read it. So make yourself what? Make yourself valuable by adding value to yourself. Make yourself valuable. For example, this young man now that is doing this, he learned it during the one, one, this strike. I'm calling it one year strike. It's one year. <laughs> That's when he learned this, you see? For fall back to February, he wasn't like this. Are, are you getting me? So do you know that some people have had became worse after this strike? You, you see now, the way he's snapping every, every one of you, he's valuable now. Are you that also? That's how it is. Become valuable by adding what? Valuable value to yourself. Even in relationship, people should have a reason why they need you. Eh? You know, I just asked some of you whether you are falling in love. Do you know why people stop calling you? They don't need you again. You are not valuable. But you want them to call you because you think you are, you know, you just go and attend to that girl. You can take her to Green Lake. Praise the Lord. So become what? Valuable. By doing what? By doing what? Add value to yourself. Become indispensable. And if you are not valuable, you can't give value. I hope you know. You can only give what you want, what you have. If you are not valuable, you cannot give. I'm your pastor because I, I add value to myself every now and then so that I can give. Because you can't give what you don't want, have. It's not possible. In a relationship, in a relationship, relationship is where there must be something you are bringing to the world, to the table. Ladies, please don't think that the only thing you are bringing is your, your cookie. Are you getting me? Your vagina. No. You are not the only one that have vagina. Hello. <laughs> Let me say it again. Ladies, don't make sure that what you are bringing to the table is not your waist. It's better you bring your head. Now you now have waist, right? It's added. When I mean waist, I'm not talking about big because... The size of vagina is not about the big yash. The big yash is leg. It's leg and it's not, it's not healthy sometimes. It's arthritis in the market. If you don't know, okay, I'm telling you now. Some girls will go and be eating apple. So that their are, they are will be like this. If they are walking on the road, you're like, hey, <laughs> They say it's what guys like. It's a lie. It's not what guys like. No, if, you, if all you can offer a man is your vagina, you are good for nothing because you are not the only one that have that. Eh? Is there any girl that doesn't have vagina? Eh? I'm asking us. Eh? 
Last time I checked, even the girl that thinks she's not beautiful has, has it. <laughs> yes, it's a value, but let that not be your only word. Value. Let that not be your only value. I like the way some of you are thinking now. Make yourself valuable. That person that left you will call you. Do you hear what I said? Oh my, I know what I'm saying. Make yourself valuable. Don't become a celebrity small. <laughs> that person you are, that have not been noticing you in church, just lead praise one day and lead it very well. Say, so what? So this small girl don't they lead praise. <laughs> And you don't know that the person is watching. Once you come down after church, and that guy will now come and say, How are you? Hello. The person is becoming jealous. I know what I'm saying. <laughs> Number four. Please, if you have questions, just raise your hand. I will stop you ask your question. But it will be good if you ask your what? Question. Number four. <clears throat> the right person increases your drive. For excellence. <coughs> the right person does what? <coughs> Increases your drive for what? For excellence. If a relationship decreases your drive for excellence and increases your satisfaction with mediocrity, that relationship is wrong. If a relationship increases, sorry, decreases your drive for excellence, and increases your, your satisfaction with mediocrity. Do you get it? If a relationship decreases your drive for excellence and increases how you like mediocrity, that relationship is what? It's wrong. Give me Judges 16. Judges 16, verse 3 and 4. <clears throat> Judges 16. What I mean by that, a relationship should drive you to be what? Excellent. Excellence is not being neat. Excellent means, for example, you are a three-pointer, now you are a four-pointer. Are you getting me? That's excellence. You have moved from one point to... So every relationship should do what? Should drive you for excellence. For what? It means that you should become better in that relationship. Any relationship you are in that is not making you better, it's wrong. Get out from that. Some of us make that mistake a lot. Judges chapter 16. Unless you want to go, everybody want to go. Uh -huh. Late at night, uh -huh. and arose at midnight and took the doors of the gate of the city and the two posts and went away with them and bar and all and put them upon his shoulders and carried them up to the top of the hill that is before what? Hebron. Uh -huh. Verse 4. After this, he loved the woman in the valley of what? Sorek, whose name was what? The other one was King James. This one is Amp. <laughs> but leave it, leave it. He's communicating what I want to say. So, Samson was doing exploits at the hilltop and now came to valley to love a woman. And that woman's name was what? You know what happened to Samson through Delilah? Delilah reduced him. Delilah decreased him. Delilah brought him down. Don't be in a relationship that brings you what? Down. Run for your life. No matter what that relationship is. So this guy was making great exploits in the, on the hill and falling in love with a woman in the valley. Are you seeing it? So the right person, how do you know the right person? The person does what? Increases your drive for what? Excellence. Excellence. The person should be able to increase your drive for excellence. When I met my wife, I told her you will go for foundation class. 
And I made her know if you don't go, it will not work. She went for foundation class. I told her you will go for Bible school. My church then they do three weeks Bible school. She went. So if you see her quoting Bible now, quoting, there's something she are you getting me? There's a process she went through. Excellence. You see my wife leading praise and worship here. She never led anyone in school. If she led, maybe I've, I've left school that time, or maybe once or twice. The people that know her that time, they, they, they saw her singing. They say, wow, so precious can sing like this. Are you seeing now? Yes. Don't be in a relationship that doesn't bring out the best in you. Are, are you getting what I'm saying? Because in future, the person will not like you again. If the person meets somebody that is better than you, they'll pull you aside. <laughs> That's the person. So it means that you, you have to also strive to be what? Excellent. You know, I'm talking about reading a book. What are you good in? What subject can you even explain? What is driving what you're doing? Hello? Some years back, the lady I'm telling you now, she's... She's working in Abuja now. Some years back, she, she wanted to, she had some money. She wanted to use that money and buy a phone. I told her, in my knowledge of wealth, phone is not what you need. Don't buy that phone. She bought that phone. It's history now. The phone spoiled. She started regretting. I will have listened to Pastor Chariot. <laughs> you know how people keep making mistakes until one day they now start reading a book that is telling them the same. The same thing somebody has told them. And <laughs> they can't even apply it. You know why you can't apply some things you have not you, you because you have not read it enough in in books. If you study enough, the thing will enter you enough to apply it. So <clears throat> the right person should increase your what? Your drive for what? So Delilah had a plan to bring down Samson. And Samson didn't know. Some people have a plan to bring you down. You know, we came to school. You know, I wonder how people come to school. Yes, it's good to, to meet each other. It's very lovely. But please, ask God to give you sense to know who is driving you to become better and who is not driving you. Anyone is not driving you to become better, run away. Tell them, thank you. I enjoyed the time we had together. But I'm moving forward. One day, my sister told me, Day day, that person don't have future. That's her boyfriend. I said, What do you mean? She said, she have, she have, she was in, she was, they were friends, I think, for more than two years or thereabout. She said that the guy doesn't have future. I said, What do you mean? He said, No, they they don't, they don't have future. Are you getting me? I, I said, and truly, please ever look at me. You, you are supposed to see your future. That my sister now is married with two kids in Port Harcourt. That guy is not married till now. <laughs> so as a young girl, as a young, you should be able to, especially the young girls, ladies, you should be able to know the man you are dating, whether he has what? A future. She was the one dating this guy. She came and told us that this guy doesn't have future. That's all. The guy was not, I don't know what it was. The guy, they were not quarreling, if you see two of them. But she discerned that this guy, I've checked, check, check, check. Because you're the one closest to that person. I hope you know. I checked it. And truly, the guy doesn't have future. The guy is still wondering about. You see him graduate to 10 years is passing though. Still wondering about. They go and drink. They go and doesn't have future. She, she has, she knows where she was going to. She left the guy behind and continued. That my sister, she's fatter than all of you here. Yes. Sometimes some ladies are not married because they are with a man that doesn't have what? Future. Just like that, my sister. Having future is not like sleeping and waking up. 
Hello. <laughs> Number five. I hope you get you got that right. Number five. The right person encourages your focus and targets. The right person encourages your what? Your focus and what? Targets. The right person shouldn't distract you from your focus and your targets. Any relationship that makes you reduce your target or even lose your focus is wrong. But the problem we have again is that some of us don't have focus. Anything that comes our, anything that catches our fancy, we tend to focus on it. When this semester began, some of you, some of you have not even set a focus on five points. Your prayer is God, give me two one. That's not a focus. So the right person encourages your what? Your what? Your focus. The right person encourages your focus and target. You should have a target. The target you need to meet. Are you getting me? So the right person, the, the right person should be the person that encourages your that target, your focus. That's why when you meet someone or when someone approaches you, you should be able to ask the person, what is your goals? What is your vision? What is your vision for 2023? If you're in a relationship now, you should be able to ask the, per your, the person you're in a relationship with, what is your vision for 2023? What is your target? What is your goal? If they say, I don't know, it's time to leave that person. And you set your own. So, people that are in a relationship should be able to come together in January and they are coming. You are saying, ah, look at what I want to focus on this year. And Are, are you getting me? As young people that we are, our focus shouldn't be only to kiss and and kiss and go to fast food. And if that's your focus, you have all men uh, uh, miserable. Some people say, "Ah, I'm not eating shawarma here. I want to go." That's your focus. I want to go and eat shawarma over there. Are, are you getting me? That shouldn't be your focus. Are we here? Are we here? So let me ask you, what is your focus? What are your targets? I want to make, you tell your, um, your friend tells you, I want to make 5 million by the end of December 2023. So, wow, that's beautiful. How do you intend to do it? Look at my plan, look at my plan, look at my plan. Make sure those plans are also good, though. Don't go and have evil plans. Are you getting me? If you say, I want to go and rob a bank, tell the person, okay, no problem. <laughs> I will not be around. <laughs> and you run away. Grace the Lord. The right person should be the kind of person who say, ah, I want, to, I want to have five points. It's okay. Let's be reading every night. Are you getting me? For four hours. For five hours. No watching of movie. So the person will call you and say, I hope you are not watching movie. I hope you are reading. So they say, ah, look at what the lecturer thought. Can we discuss it? You know? It's not the person that will tell you, leave it, leave it. Let's go for night. Let's go for night club. It's amazing that every Monday morning and every Saturday morning, you see your students coming, out, coming back from one kind of party or the other. And they are coming with their friends. I hope that's not what your own friends are, are encouraging you. If they are what is that encouraging you, maybe that's the kind of person you want to be. You can go ahead. Are, are you getting me? But some of you know that exam is coming up, right? So, ah, today is Sunday. After this fellowship now, let's go and take siesta for one hour. Let's meet by 8 p.m. Up school. I read from 8 to 1. And then, 
sleep. I'm not the kind of person that used to go for night class. I prefer to stay in my room. So because I want to encourage my wife and her roommates, they were bothering me, bothering me, come for night class, follow us to night class. So I followed them. I was sleeping throughout the night class. <laughs> I just followed them to encourage them. So we went now. <laughs> I missed my bed that night. I was like, hi. <laughs> they were reading, reading, reading. I was just there. I was just be. I don't know what I was even doing. But I was not talking so that I would not distract them. I get to be uh, after a while I slept. <laughs> then if I wake up and they want to sleep, I wake them up. Read, read. You feel like you can pass exam. Me, yeah, I have exam. Oh. <laughs> don't be like me. Oh. Yeah? I didn't fail though, but don't be like me. After 10 years, we are not using the paper. Oh. <laughs> so, any relationship that doesn't, that makes you reduce your target, even lose your focus, is what? Is what? Is wrong. Are we here? It's like this tune is making them sober. Don't worry, I like it. <laughs> okay, number six. Maybe we'll stop there. Please ask your question. You must ask question. You must ask what? You must ask question. The right person makes you think highly and not lowly. The right person makes you think what? Highly. Think big and not lowly. If you are around people that think low, you will be low. If you are around people that think high, you will be what? High. There's a testimony of our sister in this church. She says she heard me say, if where you are planning to live is like where you are coming from, then nothing would, I mean, what the hell did I even say that to? And she decided to, she decided to now go and live in self con It was a sacrifice on her behalf, but it changed her. Are you getting me? Made her better. Let me give you an example. Let's say you are living in a, um, face me, I face you, public toilet kind of yard. And you meet a friend that is encouraging you to stay there for 10 years. <laughs> eh? Run away from that kind of what? Person. So the right person makes you think what? Highly. And not what? Lowly. Makes you think highly. If a relationship is weakening your passion and relationship with God, it is what? Wrong. Some of you there is a passion inside you for God to have a relationship with God. But now you are, you, are, you are in a relationship that is weakening that passion. Please run for your life. That relationship is not good for you. Now, except it is a marital relationship where if you are already married and your husband is not the kind of person that is encouraging you, stay there and be praying for your husband. But for those that are not yet what? Married. If you know you are single, you are not yet married, you are just a boyfriend, girlfriend. And the relationship is not, is not, um, is weakening your passion and relationship with God. Quit it and go and go your way. You do you hear what I said? You do you hear what I said? Because you have a future. You know, some of you don't know that some people you are, you are relating with now might be poppers in future. Because they don't have a future. But you, you have a future. And you allow the person to keep you. It's like an ego. Mingling with a lie, mingling with a um, chicken. The ego has this big wing to fly. The chicken's big wing is just to, just to cover the cheek. And the chicken is making, no. When your destiny is to fly, fly and enter the sky. You want to be roaming about, chuckling on the floor. You know how chickens do? Chuck, chuck. Okay, 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 okay. They do their legs like this. Eagles don't do like that. Eagles are carnivorous. They sight animals then they come and use their claws and, and carry the animal up and tear it there and eat.
So if a relationship is weakening your passion and relationship with God, it is what? Is what? Is what wrong? If the relationship is bringing you down spiritually, intellectually, financially, it is time to call it quit. If you are relating with someone that you can't learn anything from, quit that relationship. Check yourself. Since three months, six months, you have not learned anything from the person you call your friend. Quit that relationship. It's not encouraging you intellectually. Quit it. I know what I'm telling you. The relationship is not challenging you. And guys, please, guys, look at me like this. If you are related with any girl and in your mind, after all, you should be related with a girl you should marry. If you are in, a, if you are in this church, you are related with a girl you are not going to marry. Quit that relationship and wait till you see the one you will marry. Do you hear what I said? So let me assume that if you're in a relationship here, you're going to marry the person. Now, if you're in a relationship with any girl, and now you want to marry that girl, are you getting me? And the girl doesn't want to learn anything from you. You, you know you know something. Are you getting me? You want to offer. You want, the girl doesn't want to learn. Maybe it's time to leave this person. Oh. Yes. Because the person will never learn, even in marriage. <laughs> I know what I'm telling you. I used to have a relationship back in school. One day the girl made an open, you know. Everyone was happy that it was her birthday. Are, are you getting it? So she now said, nobody should give me book. Oh. Nobody should give me book. Oh. And she knows who she was talking to. Nobody should give me book. Oh. Nobody should give me book. Oh. I said, okay. It's not your fault. It's, it's my fault. Hey, this one doesn't like book. <laughs> it is horrible. Yes. Sir Clausman said it's not good for a girl to be beautiful. Some people want to use sack clothes, eh? sack bag, and do clothes for themselves. Check them now. They are not reading any book. They are tired of give them book to read. Oh, this exam have come again. But give them phone to press. They are WhatsApp every time. Run away. Run away from that person. Oh. All the, all, everything they are online doing is gist. The widow's boy, dead, gist. That's all they are looking for. The gist. Hey, hey, this one. Hey, hey, that's what they are looking for. Gossip, gossip. Change that person. Let me say it again. If the relationship is bringing you down spiritually, intellectually, financially, it is time to call it quit. But let me say it again. Except it is a marital what? Relationship. If it's a marital relationship, now you are married. Please endure what you married. You hear what I said? You hear what I said? Endure what you want. I know I'm a man of books. In my house now, I have one room for books. So I, I should marry a woman that at least, even if she will not read like me, she should be able to read. Are you getting me? At least carry one book and read. And be intelligent about it. It's not that the one that says, oh, what are all these books for? And now one day, but burn it. <laughs> he does say, hey, my wife. <laughs> if I scatter my books, I see the way my wife arrange it for me, you know? I arrange it. If it's someone that doesn't like books, you, what are all these books for? All the sense, all the sense. So the right person should make you think what? Should make you think what? Highly and not what? Lowly. Praise the Lord. That's how to find the right person. Become the right person. Be the right person to attract the right person. Put your hands together for Jesus. It's time for you to ask your question. <laughs>